Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a just super casual playing with makeup kind of get ready with me. I wanted to play around a little bit more with some of the things that I purchased during my collective haul video. And I also just received some more PR that I wanted to play with. So if you're interested in seeing me play with some new makeup, then just keep on watching. Every time I stop by the Bobbi Brown counter at our Nordstrom here, they always ply me with so many samples. And I just generally, it's like I collect all these samples and I kind of tuck them away. I even have them kind of like organized really well, but I never ever think to actually use them with like skincare and shampoo and things like that. Those I will travel with, so I tend to grab for those and I'll use those. But when it comes to makeup products, I just don't use uh, samples of stuff, especially of things that I've never used before. I know that sounds completely counterintuitive because that's the point of a sample, but I decided why don't I go ahead and actually use some of the samples that I have been hoarding. So this first one is, I believe, a relatively new primer to Bobbi Brown. This is the Primer Plus Mattifier. And when they handed this over to me, I was like, oh no, I'm not really a mattifying person. I have dry skin. I really like a radiant glow. And the makeup artist there, Richard, hi Richard, um, he was like, that is a completely kind of like deceptive name. He's like, really what they should have called it is a primer plus like blurrer. So I was like, okay, well, blurring I'm down with. Mattifying, not so much. So I thought I would give this a shot. So here's what the texture looks like. It kind of looks like a translucent cream and it feels very, very slippy. It definitely has dimethicone in there. Oh, but it feels very light on the skin. It actually, once you get it on the skin, it feels kind of watery. That actually feels very cooling, which is nice. I feel like I see a little bit of blurring like over here, like around my nose and my cheekbone. I don't necessarily see anything around my eyes or my forehead so much, but just right around here. All right, interesting. It definitely feels more slippy in the hand versus uh, it on the skin. So I'm actually happy about that. I'm not a big fan of like the really silicone-y uh, primers. The third ingredient in here is dimethicone. So just so you guys know, I know a lot of people are kind of sensitive to that. Let's move on to foundation. So um, as you guys have probably heard, I think I've talked about this. I think I may have even posted something on my Instagram, but La Mer is discontinuing their uh, reparative skin tint. And I love that tinted SPF. So I'm a little bit devastated, but I was like, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's just act on this and try and find something that replaces it. I have a lot of tinted moisturizers that I like, like the Chantecaille and the Chanel. So I thought I would take the opportunity to, I don't know, just explore different options out there. So I stopped by the Clay de Peau counter and I'm still on my no buy. So I did ask for samples. And again, I was like, I need to get into this whole sample thing. So I asked for samples for the Radiant Fluid Foundation. This is the one that comes in a pump and it has an SPF 20, I believe. It's actually not on the little sample that she gave me. I should have written it down. It's either like 20 or maybe 24 even though that sounds kind of odd, but maybe 24. Uh, so I thought I would try this. So I got it in the shade 020. This is the same shade that I use in their The Foundation, the one that comes in that fancy jar. And they had given me a couple other options like BF20 and WB20, but neither of those really worked that well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply 020. They actually put it in this like perfume sampler thing so I can actually squirt out the foundation. It's like the best sample that's ever been made for me. So the formula of this foundation is actually a lot more uh, liquidy, um, thinner than I thought or was expecting. I think one of the things I like about the La Mer Reparative Skin Tint is its texture. It's like it's so creamy. It really feels like you're just putting on a face cream. So I don't know if this is going to be a good sort of substitute for it. But anyway, we'll try this out. This could be a great foundation nonetheless. Uh, let me find a foundation brush. I'm gonna use my Tom Ford Cream foundation brush and just blend this in. This has that Clay de Peau fragrance. It's a, uh, I think it's like a rose scent. It's floral. I wanna say it's, it's a light fragrance, but I can definitely smell it. I wonder if it's gonna fade a little bit. I hope so. I think I need a little bit more. So this is a very uh, light coverage, maybe light medium, which is my personal preference. So the finish of this foundation is not quite as radiant as I was expecting. I was hoping for it to be a little more radiant, um, but it has a very nice natural kind of skin-like finish to the foundation. But the name, uh, Radiant Fluid Foundation, I think is a little uh, deceptive. It's not that radiant. 
So Face Talk Home was kind enough to send me a bunch of things. And one thing included in there was this magic wand. And this is like a concealer pen with a brush tip. So I'm going to go ahead and just start the process. What's cool is this is clear. So I think I'll be able to see the product actually come up into the brush. I hope this color works for me. I think it's okay. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's see what this coverage is like. The coverage on this uh, magic wand is very light. Uh, it feels very comfortable, that's for sure. The formula of this is very, is like on the thinner side. It's not one of those really thick tacky concealers, but I think it did a little something. This eye has it, this eye does not. I think my skin tone definitely looks a little bit more evened out there. Again, not a drastic change. This is definitely on the lighter side. So there it is applied to both of my eyes. I'm seeing, now that I'm kind of like inspecting really close up, I'm seeing a little bit of like radiance to this uh, Face Talk Home Magic Wand. So that's kind of nice. It is doing a little bit of brightening, but not from the actual color, but from the finish of this uh, product. I think it sets down nicely. I don't feel that it's uh, very tacky or anything, so that is good. So Kogendo was kind enough to send me their uh, pressed powder. I don't know if this is a new product or not, but I love their aqua foundation, as you guys know. I really love their uh, moisture fit concealer, and I also really, really like their uh, powder foundation. Um, I did a whole wear test of that and I was really impressed. Um, it didn't dry out my skin or anything. So when they sent this over to me, I was really excited to give this a shot. So this is what the compact looks like. Glossy black with the Kogendo logo in the middle. I don't know if there are any shade options. This could just be like a translucent uh, powder, but it says on the back of the box, uh, finely milled, subtle pink and pearl powders combined to neutralize dullness and add a silky luster to the skin. Sounds good to me. And like all Kogendo products, there's no artificial colors, fragrance, petroleum based mineral oil or parabens. Um, and it says apply powder to puff and gently press onto face. Always keep the puff clean to ensure smooth application. All right. I think I don't really have luck with puffs. I think what I will do is use a brush probably, but we can give the puff a shot. So here's what the puff looks like. And then here is the powder. So I don't know if you can see it's split pan. So there's like the pearly powder and then here's like the pinky powder. So there's a lot more pink to the pearl, which is nice. I think if there's too much pearl, it would just look really kind of white and ghostly on the face. I'm trying to tap over both powders here. So, ooh, I'm just running my finger over the powder. I was wondering how silky it is. It is incredibly silky soft. So there's the powder. It is, yeah, it blends out. I was afraid it was gonna be that white. I was like, oh my. And it says gently press onto the skin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press. Oops, maybe I put a little bit too much on. Let me use the other side of the powder puff, which is clean. Blend that out a little bit. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I applied powder basically to this half of my face. Definitely has mattified my skin. My skin doesn't look dry, however, which is good. I'm trying to see if it left like a little bit of a cast over my skin. I do think it kind of lightened up my foundation a little bit. Uh, not really a surprise considering how light these powders are. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But the finish is quite beautiful. All right, let me apply it to the rest of my face. I'm gonna try a brush because that is definitely my preferred uh, tool. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Surat face brush and pick up just a little bit and just start around the eye area. And then apply some to the rest of my face here. I can't seem to decide right now if I feel like the powder has made me look ashy or if it's actually kind of brightened my face. I think there's like a fine line there and I'm not exactly sure where this powder sits. I think it looks okay. Sorry, I've been sitting here for like maybe five minutes just sort of waiting for the powder. Sometimes you have to kind of just wait for the powder to kind of like meld with everything else. And it's starting to look much like, you know, I've noticed this with a lot of Kogendo products. It looks nicer as the day goes on, which to me is like such a magical thing. And I feel like this powder is looking a little bit better than when I first applied it. So 
that's great. Let's move on. I also wanted to try out this uh, Smashbox Ablaze face palette. And I purchased this because I loved the Kali Contour face palette so much. This is basically their kind of brighter, warmer, and deeper version of the Kali Contour. I'm gonna go ahead and use this light bronzer color over here. I'm going in with my Sonia G Sculpt One brush. And this bronzer is a little bit powdery. I don't know if you can see the kick up in there. So I am going to tap off this brush and apply some under my cheekbones. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I like that color. I thought maybe it was gonna be too dark or maybe too warm, but I think that looks pretty nice. I'm definitely gonna add some to my neck here because it is very, very pale. Does that look a little better? I hope so. So I was gonna use the blush in here, but I realized that I have not yet used the Hourglass blush palette that I purchased during the Nordstrom anniversary sale. And I've been dying to try out this luminous flush color. And this is, I believe, part of their regular line, and I just, I don't have it, and I just been wanting to try it, so we are gonna give this a shot today. I'm just gonna go in with like an angled uh, cheek brush. This is the Chikahoto RH1, and ooh, it looks very pigmented. That is very pretty. What a pretty pink. I really do like the Hourglass blushes. They just have such a lovely sheen. Here's a swatch of it. So pretty. All right, well that is definitely a winner. I think so far we're doing really well considering this is a first impressions. So for highlight, I wanna use this um, I Love Sarah E collaboration with Dose of Colors, the Soulmate highlight. This is the one that's broken. And I keep trying to just press it in with my finger, but I'm, I'm gonna have to use alcohol. But that is this color. Now this highlight is very, very intense. So I'm gonna go in with a, a light, well, a light hand, but also a brush that lays down powder lightly. So I'm gonna go in with the Sonia G Sculpt 3 brush, and I'm just going to kind of tap it over this highlight gently. So there is Soulmate. Gosh, look how shiny that is. <laughs> wow. That is stunning. So I don't think I have any new eyebrow stuff. So I'm gonna go in with the Sisley 3-in-1 um, brow pencil and then maybe top it off with the Tom Ford fiber brow gel if I need to. But I'll do that off camera and I'll be right back. All right, there are my brows. I didn't use any of the Tom Ford fiber brow gel. I just stuck with the Sisley pencil. So moving on, let's do eyes. I got the nicest box from Viseart. I, I just... I mean, of course, I love the products that they sent me and I'll show you what I got, but the note that was included, you know, means so much to me. It says, Michelle, your support has never gone unnoticed. We greatly appreciate you and all you do for our little company. Love, Anastasia. Look at this little handwritten note. I was so moved by this note. I just, I cherish, cherish this note. Thank you so much to Viziart for sending over these goodies. They sent me um, three eyeshadow palettes, basically. They sent me two of the new Slim Pro palettes. So they basically repackaged, and I think some of the shades are a little bit different. I'm gonna do a dedicated video to these a little bit later on. Uh, but this is the Cool Mattes. And it comes in this brand new case. It has like a new kind of mechanism for opening and closing. And then all of the pans can pop out very, very easily and they're magnetized. So there is like the new cool mats in their Slim Pro palette. And then they also sent me the neutral mat, uh, which again, I have in the old packaging, but I don't have in this new Slim Pro packaging. And I think, at least from first glance, some of the shades look a little bit different. Again, I'm gonna have to do like a comparison video, but here's the neutral mat. I feel like this shade looks a little bit different and even the orange looks a little bit more subdued. But again, it has the new packaging where this is like a different mechanism to open and close. It's much nicer, it feels nicer. Um, and then all of the pans pop out really, really easily from this magnetic palette. So they sent me over those two and then they sent me over a Theory palette uh, and this is an Amethyst, which is that purple family, which I did not have. So excited to try. So I think I'm gonna use that today. But here is what the Amethyst palette looks like. Isn't that pretty? So like all the Theory palettes, there's three mattes, three shimmers. It comes in this cool kind of like tri-fold 
uh, magnetized packaging and uh, there's like a little mirror inside here. So we're gonna be playing with this palette today, this Amethyst Theory palette. So I'm gonna go in with my Isom W23 brush and I'm gonna go into the lightest matte shade over here. And I'm going to focus that on the inner portion of my lid here. I just wanna get a better sense of the color. Oh, nice. Like a really pretty, pretty lilac wash. Then I'm gonna go straight into this dark matte color here at the bottom. Just gonna pack a little bit on. I'm gonna take it slow. And I'm gonna start on the outer corner and just bring it in. Oh, pretty. I like how these are blending together. That's one of the best things about Viseart shadows. They just work really, really well together, the matte ones especially. I'm gonna take my Sigma Blending E25 brush. I'm just gonna go over these colors, blend them out a little bit more there. And then I'm gonna go into this middle shimmer shade and pop that onto the center of my lid. Ooh, pretty. Seems like people really don't like Viseart shimmer shadows. I like them. I've never had a problem with them. I think they're really pretty. I mean, look at that. Look at that lilac y shimmer there. So pretty. And now I'm going to take a fluffy blending brush and go into this mid tone uh, matte shade and just lightly tapping that in. And I'm going to use that to transition out this top edge here and maybe this side too. I like how this one purple mid-tone matte in here is a little bit warmer than the rest. It really makes for a nice uh, transition shade. I am liking this Amethyst palette. I'm telling you, Viseart never, ever disappoints. Never. I am gonna go in with my Tom Ford Eye Cole Intense in the color Bruise. This is not new at all, but I just think it would go perfectly with this Amethyst palette. So I'm just gonna tight line uh, my upper lash line and then uh, apply it to my lower lash line. All right, eyeliner is done. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some mascara. I'm gonna use the Chantecaille Faux Seals Mascara. This is, again, not a new product, but I talked about this in uh, my last mini reviews haul, and I really like this mascara, and I just haven't used it in a while because I have so much makeup. Uh, so I whipped this back out, and I want to use it today. So uh, I'm just looking around for my lash curler, which I can't find. Oh, here it is. So let me go ahead and do this off camera because that's boring to watch and I'll be right back. All right, mascara is on. Uh, let's move on to lips and then we can wrap it up. So I think what I'm gonna try is, I had uh, received this from Pat McGrath and this is the Christie color in matte trance. I thought it was a little bit too light for me. So what I'm gonna do is use a lip liner that's maybe a little bit darker and see if I can get like the right shade kind of combo going. So I whipped out my Pat McGrath lip liner in buff and I think this is like a touch deeper than Christie. So we'll give this a shot. So there is buff. Now I'm wondering, I, maybe it doesn't look good with this uh, eye color, but let's put it on and see what happens. Sometimes you just can't tell. So here is Christy, what is all over my hands? Wow. I think buff is actually like the same exact shade as Christy. I still don't think this is my color. Maybe it's not the fact that it's light. It's just, it's a little bit on the peachy side, which may look okay, but with this eye look, I think it's not so great. This is a little bit too warm. This is a little bit too cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and we'll try something else. So I'm just gonna go in with this uh, Sisley Fido Lip Delight. It's Beauty Lip Care and I have it in the color one, cool and i showed this in a haul i think i got this when i was in new york so this i hauled a while ago and i haven't really used it this isn't really like a lip oil i thought that was more what it was it's much it has much more uh, of a thickness to it than an oil which kind of just is oily and just kind of runs everywhere this definitely has more of like a lip gloss uh, oil kind of uh, feel to it. Very similar to the Clay de Peau Radiant Lip Gloss, but there's no tack, but it really feels like it's gonna stay put. Like there's definitely like a density to it. Mm, this is nice. And why do I feel like everything is turning really peach on my lips today? Maybe it's the purple eyeshadow. Maybe it's everything in relation to the purple eyeshadow is just looking a little bit warmer than usual. I just went in with the dark matte color and just kind of deepened out the outer corners of my eyes a little bit. I felt like 
um, it wasn't looking as dimensional as I liked. So I just did that little addition. Uh, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions down below, but I think everything is looking nice. The foundation is still looking nice. I think like the Kogan Do uh, powder looked really, really nice. Um, this face Stockholm magic wand, I think is okay. I don't think it's one of my favorite under eye products, whether it brightening or concealing. Maybe I need the lighter shade. Maybe that would make me a little bit happier, but right now underneath my eyes, like they look fine, they look fine, but they don't look like, oh my gosh, like such an improvement. They just look okay. So let me know down below in the comment section what some of your thoughts are. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe down below. I'll see you in my next video, bye.